ladies? Yes, How are you, Judy? Good. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you, other ladies? Gaida, Jana Mishal, Layan, Walid, Shadin, Rose, Meera, Al Makki. <coughs> Uh, ladies, you must have checked out your revision sheet is uploaded on MLG. Uh, I shall also upload today all the resources which are uh, uh, included for your final exam under the final exam uh, folder on team so that it's, it's easy for you to access. Uh, so you may concentrate on the revision sheet and go through the PPT and the textbook pages. By the weekend, inshallah, I shall upload the answer key as well. Any more doubts or questions you have? regarding the final exam content or revision sheet or anything. The exam is going to be for 25 marks. Uh, you will be having challenging question for 1.5 marks. And uh, you will be having multiple choice questions. Uh, fill in the blanks where you need to write the answer and structured questions. Clear? Yes, clear. Okay, thank you. So, Judy, did we start reptiles or are we yet to start it today? No, we're about to start it. Okay, we are done with the worksheets for amyas, right? We were going to do the worksheets for the amyas. Uh, we didn't solve the worksheets for the amyas? No, we ended, uh, We finished the uh, last part of the endotherms and the ectotherms yesterday. Uh -huh. We're going to do the worksheet today. All right, great. So do you want me to directly go ahead and solve the worksheet or you want to recap of the entire topic? Shall we recap it or shall we solve the worksheet? No, solve it directly. Okay, great. Give me just a moment while I retrieve the worksheets. Actually, Miss, I think we did this. We did only the first page. Yes, only the first page. Uh, yes, my dears, I believe we just started solving the worksheet, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, sure. Let me pull out the worksheet. This is chapter 26, right? Give me a moment while I pull out the MCQ worksheet. It's not only the MCQ. Yeah, yeah, the structure as well. I believe I removed the structured worksheet as uh, already. Give me a moment. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so this is worksheet 12 on AIM Newt's ladies. So let's start solving it. I believe we did the first two questions yesterday. No. Uh, let me repeat, repeat it again. We did the first two and we also did these. No, no, no. We did the, uh, the first page. Oh, we did the first two questions and the box. And the box as well, right. So yes. we need to do from here, isn't it? Yes. Right. So let's get started. Yeah, place a check mark in the appropriate box uh, to indicate whether the following characteristics are true of amniotes with a sprawling stance or of amniotes with an upright stance. So we discussed uh, while we were doing the anatomy that a few of the amniotes, they sprawl. They have a sprawling kind of a movement while walking and the others, they have an upright stance. So let's check out A. Judy, would you like to answer starting with A? Yes, animal can breathe and run at the same time because different muscle groups are used for each activity. There are five sins. Yeah, so is it the upright stance or the small yeah, stance? It just said the upright stance. Perfect. I don't know how to put a tick mark, so we'll put an asterisk over here. Great. Moving on to B, Humna, could you please answer? 
Okay, animals cannot run and breathe at the same time because the same muscles are used for both activity. The scrolling stance. Okay. It is an example of a sporing stance. Very good. C, Jenna Mishal, could you please answer C? Less energy is used to walk. Upright stance. Upright stance, perfect. Like we all mammals do, we use less energy to walk. Uh, D. More energy is used to walk. Who's going to answer? Rose, could you please answer this? D. Is it a sprawling stance or an upright stance? Rose, you there? Amal, would you like to answer? Amal or Aya? Ladies? Can I? Judy, uh, we'll just ask if others are interested. Jian, would you like to answer this question? Jian? <laughs> Sorry for coming late, says Juveria. Okay, Juveria, would you like to answer this question? Or Jude, Sala? Ladies, you need to participate, all of you. I can. Yes, Aya, go ahead. Could you please answer about D? More energy is used to walk. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It is a sprawling stance. Yeah. Right answer, Aya. Thank you. What about E? The body sways side to side when walking. Jude Sala, could you please answer this question? Jude? Or Lion Tomiati, Jory, Juveria, no one. Okay, Judy, go ahead. Um, which one? E, right? E, e. Less energy is used to walk. Um, e, E. It's not C, it's E. Oh, the body sways side to side when walking. The body sways side to side when walking. Uh, it's the sprawling. Yes, it is the sprawling stance. Very good. Uh, Yumna, could you please answer F? Legs move forward and backward like a pendulum. If, yeah. Upright stance. Yes, upright stance. Perfect, ladies. So these are the answers for these questions. Perfect. Let's move on to question nine. Who wants to read and answer it? Jenna Michelle, would you like to? Number eight. The pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit differ. The pulmonary circuit moves oxygen rich blood from the heart to the lungs and oxygen, oxygen poor. Rich or oxygen poor blood. Jenna? Oxygen poor. Mm hmm. And oxygen rich blood blood back to the heart. Yes, perfect. The systemic circuit moves oxygen rich blood from heart to the rest of the body. Perfect. So these are the answers, ladies, related to the systemic and the pulmonary circuit. So Jenna, uh, Jude, you were asking me yesterday which type of questions. So maybe like this, or I can give you a picture of the uh, systemic and the pulmonary circuit and ask you questions. The blood which is moving, is it oxygen rich or poor like that? Got it, Jude? Jude. Yeah, moving on to question nine now. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah, Judy, you can uh, start reading and answering. The around the Venn diagram show the difference between uh, the circulatory system of a reptile and the circulatory system of a mammal. Uh -huh. um, so the circulatory system. Um, let me check. Uh, of the reptiles, for example, they have J, the three chambered heart. And the mm -hmm. mammal for chambered heart. Okay. So let's do for reptiles for septile circulatory system. It has a three chambered heart or a four chambered. Judy. No, three. 
three chambered. So which is the answer which goes for three here? Where is it? G. G. Okay, G goes into this box now. Very good. And what about A? Let's start with A. Animal can adjust blood flow in response to the oxygen needs. So is this an uh, a statement for the reptile circulatory system? Judy? Yes, of course, it can adjust blood flow in response to the oxygen needs, isn't it? This part I'm a bit confused in it, so. Yeah, so it would be an, uh, yeah, a statement for the reptile circulatory system itself. So, of course, it can adjust the blood uh, uh, to the, in response to the oxygen needs. And uh, then moving on to J, you did it already. What are the other things you think? Centralized heart. Centralized heart, uh, does it go to mammalian circulatory system or both? Is a heart a main part of the circulatory system in both reptiles and mammals? Both. Yes. 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 So can we say it is both? Yes, okay, so B goes into both. Yes, of course, it is important and uh, central for both the uh, mammals and the reptiles. Now, moving on to C, the four chambered heart is present in mammals, circulatory system, or reptiles? Mammal. Mammals. So we will put C into mammals over here. Moving on to D, increase control over body temperature. Who has control over body temperature? Reptiles. The mammals or the reptiles? Uh, what does it mean? Reptiles, meaning are they ectodermic or endodermic? The endoderms, mammals, they have the control, control over the body temperature or the ectoderms. Oh, they have control. It's mammals. Yeah, yeah. Mammals, definitely. So they are endoderms. So we will put D into the mammals. Now moving on to E. Large and constant supply of oxygen available. Is it true for mammals. reptiles or mammals? Reptiles. Are you sure? Mammals. 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 Because it has four chambers of the heart. It has a constant supply of oxygen available. So it is true for the mammals. Perfect. Moving on to F. Oxygen rich and oxygen poor blood are kept separate. Reptiles or mammals? Reptiles. Reptiles, why? Because it has a three-chambered heart and there is uh, uh, just a division between the pure and the impure blood. Yeah. So, can we say mammals or reptiles or both? Both. Both, but the septum is more prominent in the mammalian heart, which has four chambers compared to the reptile heart. Okay, so we can say it is a statement for the mammalian heart itself because it has a clear septum dividing the two ventricles in the four-chambered heart. Now moving on to G. Uh, G is oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood pumped into single ventricle. Single ventricle. Is it reptiles or mammals? Reptiles. Reptiles, because they have a single ventricle, which is a three-chambered heart, so it is for reptiles. Moving on to H, uh, pulmonary circuit. It is present in both Mammal. of them or only one? Any one? Mammals. But reptiles don't have a pulmonary circuit? Both. Both. Both of them, they have a systemic as well as a pulmonary circuit. But the difference is one has three chambered and the others have the four chambered heart. Similarly, the systemic circuit, is it present in both? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it is present in both again. Uh, now, moving on to after I, J, three chambered heart, you answered already, it is present yes. in reptiles. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to K, uh, two atria and one ventricle. Again, it is the answer for reptiles. It is a three-chambered heart. So we will put K also under reptiles. And finally, I, two atria and two ventricles. Mammals. Yeah. Mammals. Perfect. So these are the answers, ladies. But is it I or K? L, L, I'm sorry. <laughs> Confused with the alphabet still. All right. Okay, so A, J, G, and K are true for reptiles. C, D, E, F, L are true for mammals, whereas B, H, I, and K 
uh, I believe it's only I, not K, sorry. BHI are true for both the mammals and the reptile circulatory system. Clear, ladies? Any doubts or questions so far? No. All right, great. Now let's move on to question 10. Who wants to read out and answer it? No. 10? Yeah, go ahead. A dash body temperature is determined by the surrounding environment. So it's some body temperature changes with the environment. Uh, changes with the environment, it's ecto, ectoderm. Ectotherm, I mean. Perfect. Changes with the environment, definitely it is ectotherm. 11. Yumna. And the glycine temperature changing its behavior. Is it uh, endotherms? Do endotherms uh, regulate by changing any behavior? No. Uh huh. So we just studied yesterday the reptiles, they come out of the water when they are feeling Excuse cold me. and they go out and lie down in the sun when they are free, when they need the sunlight or when they want warmness. Okay. So, of course, it is the ectotherms which change their behavior according to the uh, surrounding temperature. So, the answer for this is also ectotherms. Now, moving on to question 12. Jenna Michelle, would you like to answer? Jenna? Yes, miss. Yeah, go ahead. Is it a reptile? No, what is the, we're talking about ectotherms and endotherms here. It uses its own metabolic heat to, to keep its tissues warm. So is it an endotherm or ectotherm? Endotherm. Endotherm, perfect. Aya, could you please answer question 13? Yeah. Read out, please. An endotherm's body temperature stays relatively constant all the time because it regulates metabolic activity. Perfect. Of course, it is the endotherm. Right answer. Thank you. Yana, who wants to do the next section? Wherein for each type of amniote, indicate whether it is an ectotherm or an endotherm. Okay. We have at 14 got a snake. Is it an ectotherm or endotherm? Jude, Judy? I think it might be uh, ecto. Yes, it is ecto. Perfect. Miss, what is the falcon? What is a falcon? You know what the falcon is? The bird, like eagle. Oh. Very green falcon. Yes, a falcon could. It is a bird. So is it an endoderm or ectoderm? Birds. Endo. And words are endotherms, like mammals. Great, Yumna, right answer. Your biology teacher. Endo. Endo. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm an endotherm. Okay. Now let's move on to the next section. Circle the word that best completes the statement. Number seventeen. Who's going to answer? Can I? Yeah, go ahead. The systemic pulmonary... The word system, start from here. Oh, the word system is part of the term systemic and can help can help you to remember the difference between the systemic circuit and the pulmonary circuit. Mm -hmm. Dash, um, what moves... Uh, pulmonary? Circuit moves blood from the heart. Yeah, are you sure? From the heart to the rest of the body. No, no, no. So no is the pulmonary or the systemic? There is no lungs involved here, so definitely it is the. I got confused. The systemic. Are you? Did you get confused, Judy? Yeah, this part is a bit confusing. Yeah, yeah. Then the next one. Obviously, it is the pulmonary circuit. Pulmonary. Uh, it takes the oxygen poor blood from the heart to the lungs. Yeah, so where the lungs yeah. are involved, the it's the circuit. Great. Uh, Yumna, could you please answer number 18? Okay. The, the prep ender means inner and the prep ector means outer. These two meanings are related to the definition of endotherm and ectotherm. 
An endotherm controls its temperature by regulating its metabolic energy inner inside its body. And yes, it's did you see inside or outside? Inside. Yeah, very good. An endotherm uses the outer environment to regulate its body temperature. Outer environment. Perfect. Right answer, Yumna. Thank you so much. So let's also solve the MCQ worksheet and then we can move on with reptiles. Yeah. Who wants to answer number one? Aya, would you like to answer number one? Sure. Um, all neo embryos develop inside semi-permeable shell. Do all the amute embryos develop inside a semi-permeable shell? Oh, uh, protective fluid filled sac. Perfect. It is C, the protective fluid filled sac, because for mammals, uh, it is the sac, but not the egg. But though it is right for a few amniotes, but all of them know C is the right answer. Thank you. Uh, Jenna, could you please answer number two? In contrary to reptiles, mammals walk with legs underneath the body. A. Don't all of them walk with legs underneath the body? Is it A or D? D. Are you sure? B. <laughs> Yeah, they, the, the, uh, most of the uh, mammals, they walk through the rub, rib muscle contractions with the help of the ribs and the muscles. Uh, is it uh, right, Judy? D is the right answer? Yeah. Rib muscle No. Actually, I think it's A. Do you think it's A? Yeah. With legs underneath the body? Let's check out. Is it Very side good. It's side. A. <laughs> yes, Jenna Michal, you were right. A is the right answer with the legs underneath the body. But I was thinking about the rib muscle contractions as well. Uh, but uh, the rib muscle contractions are present in all the, again, amniotes or reptiles or birds on everyone. So definitely it is with legs underneath the body is the right answer. Yeah. Judy, could you please answer number three? The role of the amniotic systemic circuit is to move oxygen rich blood to the, so the systemic and move some, oh, from the heart to the rest rest of the body. Perfect. D is the right answer from the heart to the rest of the body. Yumna, could you please answer number four? A reptilian heart has how many chambers? Three. Eight. Three chambers. Perfect. C is the right answer. Number five. An ectotherm is an organism whose body temperature is determined by its surrounding environment. Perfect. Surrounding environment is the right answer. All right, ladies. Thank you, Judy. So we are done with this MCQ worksheet as well, ladies. How much time is left? We have about 15 minutes left. So let's quickly get started with our next topic, which is reptiles. Okay. So this is chapter 26.2, ladies. Uh, let me also tell you the page number. Is it 716? No, 743. 743. Thank you so much, Judy. All right, ladies, so please open page number 743 from your textbooks. We are going to do chapter 26.2 right now, which is reptiles. Let's start with the verse from the Quran as we always do. The classification of animals into reptiles, humans, and quadrupeds has been stated in the Quran in uh, Surah Noor verse 45, in which Allah states that he has created every animal from water. Some of them, they creep on their bellies like snakes and reptiles. Other walk on two legs like humans and other walk on four like all the other animals. So Allah creates what he pleases, subhanAllah. 
The objectives for this topic would be to describe the diversity and evolution of reptiles and to differentiate among the four groups of modern reptiles. So let's start with a KWL. What do you understand by looking at this picture? A lizard coming from its egg. Mm -hmm. So do all the reptiles, they uh, lay eggs or do they give birth to live youngs? Some give birth to live youngs and some lay eggs. Perfect, Yumna. So a few of them, they give birth to live young, as we discussed about a few snakes, which in which the eggs hatch inside the bellies and then the live young are given birth. And then a few of them, they lay eggs and then the eggs hatch. Perfect. So let's talk about in detail about reptiles now. Here we again have the objectives. Okay. So starting with the key concept, it is reptiles were the first amniotes. Okay, so the very first amniotes which uh, the evolution has taken place was of reptiles. Uh, so basking on the sunny banks of the river, the lizard may look slow, but it has a top speed of almost 20 kilometers per hour and very strong jaws filled with sharp teeth, isn't it? But because it is an ectoderm, it is lying or you can, it is sunbathing because it wants uh, to increase its body temperature isn't it? So it is a daunting predator. Of course, it, it is a predator. The eastern water dragon may only grow to 80 centimeters in length and may never compare to a crocodile as a threat to humans, but it hunts, kills and eats its prey in the same way that its larger cousins do. So what makes reptiles unique? All of them are predators, though the larger reptiles like the crocodiles and alligators, they, they feed and hunt larger animals like maybe buffaloes and even humans and other, uh, uh, you know, the herbivores. But as the smaller reptiles, they also eat, uh, even if you're considering a lizard, it hunts and preys on mosquitoes and smaller insects. Similarly, if you're talking about a water dragon, it, uh, it eats the little insects and the organisms. So all of the reptiles, they are predators and they eat the other animals. So let's discuss in detail about the reptiles now. Reptiles are a diverse group of amniotes. About 200 million years ago, a mass extinction, it resulted in loss of many of Earth's plants and animal species. Maybe during the same mass ex uh, during the same extinction, even the dinosaurs, they got extinct because they also belong to the reptile species. Isn't it? So one group of organisms that survived the reptiles, they have thrived for millions of years. So reptiles are ectotherms that are covered with dry scales or plates and they reproduce by laying amniotic eggs covered with tough outer shell. So the very first kinds of amniotes which lay eggs and which started living on land all together are the reptiles. Uh, so here you can see in the picture, what is it? Is it a chameleon? No, it is an eastern water dragon. It must use energy from sunlight to maintain its body temperature. From its perch atop a rock, it can also spot predators or look for the prey. So it is not only trying to uh, regulate its body temperature by uh, sunbathing on this, uh, 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 you can say the store rock here, but it's also trying to look for the predators to escape and also for the prey so that it can hunt and eat, right? So the reptiles, as we discussed earlier, they are of two types depending upon the how they give birth. Unlike amphibians, reptiles, they produce a completely self-sustaining amniotic egg that allows an embryonic reptile to develop fully before it is born. So as we discussed about all the layers in the previous topic, which give nutrition, which help in gas exchange, which also protect the uh, fetus developing inside. So these are the first kinds of amniotes which started producing these amniotic eggs that is that fully uh, allows the embryo to grow inside the egg. Not only the nutrition, the protection, everything. But there are two ways that reptile egg develop. One is oviparous and the second one is viviparous. Oviparous reptiles, they deposit their eggs into an external nest and the eggs develop completely independent of the adult reptile. So all the snakes, the legs, 
and all the kinds of uh, water dragons and uh, what about the crocodiles ladies do they lay eggs the crocodiles judy yumna yeah do the crocodiles lay eggs i think some and some i believe they lay eggs right so the eggs are wrong yeah they lay eggs the about the egg shell i believe is not very hard it is rubbery and uh, very smooth but they yes they lay eggs uh, okay so all these are oviparous which lay eggs whereas viviparous reptiles they hold the eggs inside their body through the duration of development and give birth to live offspring so they do not lay the eggs though the eggs are laid inside their body and they stay inside the body till they hatch and they hatch inside the body and the live young are brought in, into the world so this is the difference between oviparous and viviparous reptiles so both of them lay eggs but in oviparous reptiles they lay eggs outside the body where an eggs hatch and the young ones come out whereas in viviparous reptiles the eggs they are laid inside the body they hatch inside the body and the live youngs are given birth did you uh, the is the difference clear between oviparous and viviparous ladies Yeah. Okay. So the shape and sizes of modern reptiles vary widely. Some reptiles they have no legs, other reptiles run swiftly on land and spend much of their time in the water, and the oddly shaped turtles and tortoises they carry their homes on their backs. So let's watch a video on reptiles now. We shall watch about the diversity of the reptiles. Monster Math presents edition below ten. Okay, class, let's be. Is the audio clear? Yes, Miss. Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about some very interesting vertebrate animals. We present the reptiles. Reptiles are vertebrate animals which are characterized by their special way of moving. Many move by dragging their tummy or abdomen on or close to the ground. Their name in Latin means just that. Reptare means to crawl or slither. Many are terrestrial, but there are also some that live in water. All reptiles have a number of characteristics we should know about. so we can recognize them reptiles are cold-blooded animals that breathe with their lungs they are oviparous that is they reproduce by eggs when the eggs develop and hatch the babies are just like their parents but very small aren't they cute as you can see Reptile skin is covered with strong tough scales and some like tortoises even have a shell. It looks like he has his house on his back, doesn't it? As for feeding, well, most reptiles are carnivorous. They hunt. this crocodile which has just eaten this poor rodent or this cute chameleon with its long sticky tongue that catches all kinds of insects look look as we said already most reptiles are carnivorous but
something. Well, goodbye for now, everyone. And don't forget to subscribe.